Okay, so today our topic is on conflict management. If you're a good steward, a good student, um, you would know what we're talking about. So I'm thinking you've already done your work. And I hope I'm not talking to myself. Because so far the instruction I gave has not been taken. So I hope I'm not talking to myself. Anyway, so how many people have not been in conflict? And I, I'm, I'm so glad this is what we're talking about because probably it might display any time from now. Conflict resolution. That's what the topic is. Conflict management in the family. And being part of this large family, we all have different personalities. And already I can see we are getting into that conflict. <laughs> conflict space. So how many people have not been in conflict before? You have not encountered any conflict. How many people have encountered conflict? Okay, thank you for those that are talking to me. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna read the memory verse. So today, before I read, we are taking it out from lesson 40. I'm going to be talking about today, you know, about conflict management in the family. What is conflict? What causes conflict? And how to manage conflict. So hopefully by the time this ends, we will have, oh, sorry, brother. Um, let's wait on it for now. Yeah, I'll call for it. Thank you. We are going to talk about um, conflict and how to manage it. So I'm going to read the memory verse. It says that recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. That's Romans 12, 17. And then our lesson text verse comes out of the book of Genesis, but before I jump right on to it, I want to read the um, Romans 12, 17 again from the TPT, the Passion Translation. It says that never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. So that's the TPT version. And I'm going to read now the lesson text from the book of Genesis 13, verses 7 to 9, and it says... And there was a strife between the headmen of Abram's cattle and the headmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled there in the land. Verse 8. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my headmen and thy headmen, for we, brethren, for we be brethren. Verse 9 and the last verse. Is it not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I'll go to the right. If thou would depart to the right hand, then I'll go to the left. May the Lord bless his reading of his word. So quickly, uh, what is conflict? Uh, according to the Bible, and um, in fact, the Sunday School Manual, it says that the lesson introduction says that a family is defined as a group of people related by blood, marriage, law, e.g. adoption or custom. Generally, conflict can be defined as strong disagreement between people, groups, etc. that has resulted into often angry argument. Conflict management is the practice of being able to identify and handle conflict sensibly, fairly, and efficiently. Conflict is inevitable. So no relationship is perfect or conflict-free. No matter how nice you are, there's going to be conflict because of our personalities. So right now we're talking about conflict in family. So I want you to, as we go through this, I want you to think about situations in your own home, your family, how have you been able to you know, manage the conflict. So managing conflict in the family and its causes. Conflict is the family in family may arise from misunderstanding among members 
of the family, that is parent, child, spouse-in-law, ETC. There are other causes of conflict in the family. Can somebody tell me what other causes, what else causes conflict in family? Finances, I hear finances. Anybody else? Children, what about them? Children are always fighting among themselves. I wonder what's going on there when they can't just start fighting. What are, why are they fighting? Just for the fun of it? Or they're fighting over a toy? Anything. Okay. They say anything. What else can cause conflict? Lack of trust. That's a good one too. So here I have, I'm going to run down the memory verses. Like I said, I want it to be more practical today. And I urge you, if you don't have the manual, please <laughs> let us know or find somebody who has it. And I'm believing that you guys will be, you family, you'll be like the Christians of Barrier. The Christians that didn't just take the word as they heard it, but you can take the word and go rightly divide it after this. Go and prove me if I'm telling you or directing you the way that you should go. So just don't take everything I say. So here there is incompat incompatibility, and you can read it from Amos 3.3, unresolved disagreement, lack of trust, we had that, unforgiveness, communication gap, and I think that's a, a huge one. Um, we had financial and then lack of genuine love. So how do we manage conflict within family? Can somebody tell me, how do you manage f conflict within your family? Forgive one another. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, there's a hand right here. Okay, open communication. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. So open communication, these are some of the things that we can do. Managing um, conflict within family. We can also examine, our, examine yourself in every uh, place you find yourself in conflict. Ask yourself, how did I contribute to this? What was my role? Because in any given situation, everybody is right. Because that's how they see it. But at the same time, how did we, you know, it says it takes two to tango. So how did we arrive there? So that's important as well. Um, maintain openness and sincerity with, with one another. Uh, you can find that in the book of Genesis 2.25. Live a life of humility. You know, at times the egos and the prides can come in, especially like even in situations of, we, we heard example, parent to, to child, you know, at times because we are the adults, it's easier to say to the child, I am right, when you know deep down you're wrong. But you think, I mean, <laughs> you think that if you say you're wrong, then you become lesser, but that's not what it is. As a matter of fact, I think, you know, when you admit to people that are lower than you that you are wrong and acknowledge it and own responsibility, own mistakes, you're actually more respected. They start seeing you with a different lens. And then my other PCA says, you know, love one another, revenge not yourself for wrongs done against you. And that is found in the book of Romans twelve nineteen. So that's about it. This is from our lesson text. Now we're going to go into a more interactive and um, I need your attention to this one. So we're going to go into, how many people are away? I mean, no, uh, the five uh, conflict management styles and they've, and they've practiced them. This was, you know, the work that was done by Kilman and Rogers back in the day, and somebody else improved on it. Okay, it looks we are all going to be learning together. So I wanna read this verse. It says that he that troubleth his own house 
shall inherit the wind. Goodness. I don't know how you inherit the wind. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. So basically, this is Proverbs 12, 19, 29. Proverbs eleven twenty nine. Basically, what it's saying is that if you, being the parent, are causing trouble in your home, it's easier for you to destroy what you have built and somebody else will inherit what you have built because you are the one that's inviting trouble. And I pray it will not be so in Jesus' name. So now I am going to move on to what can make ourselves better. So I have a uh, different conflict management style cards. I don't know if I have enough. If we don't have enough, please share. Especially if you are in the same family, just take one because I don't think we have enough. And uh, the goal of this conflict management style is to figure out how do we take uh, these styles because each and every person has a default, but then they also work in different scenarios. Some other people, by default, they're just competing people. It doesn't matter what's going on. Then some other people are avoiding people. It doesn't matter what's going on. That's their default. But you might find that what's going to happen is that in every situation, there's going to be a different style. Maybe at home you're totally different from what you are in the office. You know, in, at home you can express yourself because you're in your own home. The, the earlier verse we read up in, in the book of Genesis 13, 7 to 9, the Bible also indicates that Abraham really loved Lot. Lot was, you know, his favorite you know, among his relatives. And because he was his favorite, he did not want any contention, and love ruled. So he wanted the best out of it. So today I'm going to just read James 1.19. Um, we are not going to talk about the different styles. So if you have a card, just raise it, and you're going to get a conflict management style um, assessment that you can complete later because some of us might know our style some of us don't you should have this card if you are in this room so there are different uh, conflict management styles we have the accommodating style which is the um, if multimedia can help me uh, project it Multimedia, can you please project? Yeah, there we go. So we have the five conflict management styles. We have the accommodating style, which here they show uh, a bear. What is the accommodating style? We're going to talk more a little bit about that. And then we have the collaborating style, and we have an hour. And then we have the competing style. In some places, you might find a shark, so that's a lion. And then we have the avoiding style, which is a turtle. And then we have the compromising style, which is the fox. So I'm just going to do high level and break it down for you what these mean. And think about it as I do the definition. Think about it to yourself, like which one you might fall into. So for the... No, hold on. Just give me a second here. So for the accommodating style, that uh, the accommodating style is, as you know, it emphasizes on human relationships. That's an accommodating style. It will ignore their own goals and, res and resolve conflict by giving in to others and they are not as assertive, but they are very cooperative. You know, so that's the accommodating style. It likes to maintain relationships. The disadvantage is that uh, giving 
in may not be productive just because you want to save a relationship. Um, and it also can be taken advantage of. So that's the high level. And then when we go to the collaborating style, which is the hour, the collaborative style is, you know, they are collaborative. Their problem conflicting management style is collaborative. Those are the hours. And they value goals and relationships. The hours view conflict as problems to be solved and find solutions agreeable to all sides. Both sides get what they want and negative feelings are eliminated. And I'm going to quickly jump on to the avoiding style, which is the turtle. The turtles are, you know, they want to withdraw. How many people are in conflict? You'd rather walk away, do whatever you want to do because that's, that's, um, that's your default because that's what you want. So that's what turtles do. So the turtles would rather hide and ignore conflict than resolve it. This leads them to be un uncooperative and unassertive. Uh, the advantage is they may, may maintain, to, uh, maintain relationships that would be hurt by conflict resolution. So they would rather maintain a, re a relationship as well. The conflict remains unresolved. That's the problem with the turtles. And then now when you go to the compromising one. So the compromising one is the, like the foxes. Uh, those, they like relationships are maintained and conflicts are removed. They are concerned about goals and relationships. Foxes are willing to sacrifice some of their own goals while persuading others to give up part of theirs. Compromise is assertive and cooperative. That's the... Uh, the fox. And then when you go to the lion, uh, the lion is very competitive. You know, it would rather make, make sure that somebody win. This is a win-lose situation. Somebody has to win, you know, and they really don't care about relationships. They don't care about how you feel. The goals must be met. We have to do this. And the advantage is that, um, at times, the de decision is correct, but a better decision without compromise can result. The disadvantage, they may breed hostility, resentment towards you know, the, the, other <laughs> the others. So these are the high level styles. So I want you to see who is brave enough to tell me which one they are. Doesn't mean you're a fox if I say. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Cecilia. Yeah, I think I'm a combination of accommodating, collaborating, and compromising. That's, that's very uh, possible because one can have just a, a default. At the same time, situations can allow you to pivot. Like, okay, you know what, in this situation, do I collaborate, do I compromise? So they change, but you need to understand what your default is. If you understand your default, then it's easier for you to know when to react. You know, you don't, you know, especially with conflict resolution, uh, the management styles, you're not supposed to be reactional. So when you know your your style, you should be always be ready to, okay, how do I handle this situation? At times, it's better for you to even remove yourself from that situation until you come down, because at times, emotions are at stake. So in order to achieve some of these things, um, there's a lot in this lesson, so I can't finish it all, but I want us to point out that the goal of this is to master the art of listening. What is to master the art of listening? This is being able to listen to one another. So James 1.19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We have heard the saying that God gave us two ears and one mouth because he wanted us to do twice the hearing with less the talking. Listening is a great tool to help resolve issues and conflicts in the family. Some problems in the family may not require fixing, but all do, or they only require listening. Many solutions are discovered by listening to the concerns of others. Allow your family members the opportunity to be heard during discussions and disagreements. 
This sends a message to them that they are important and what they are saying does matter. God is our father. He is omnipotent and omniscient. He humbles himself to listen to our prayers and concerns every day. We should do the same for our families. Amen. So the tips that I would like to leave you with today are two things that I want to leave with you. How many people years ago remember Pastor uh, teaching on communication and family? And she urged us to take time, at least 15 minutes every week, if pos- every day if possible, but I think every week if possible, to actually have a time whereby the children will talk, the parents will talk, everybody will be heard. Anybody remembers that? If not, I urge you to, to do that with grace and love. But I want to leave you with this recipe for a happy home before we pray. So the ingredients for a happy home, four cups of love, two cups of loyalty, three cups of forgiveness, one cup of friendship, five spoons of hope, two spoons of tenderness, four quarts of faith, a barrel of laughter. The directions, take love and loyalty Mix them thoroughly with faith, blend it with tenderness, kindness, and understanding. Add friendship and hope, sprinkle abundantly with laughter. Garnish with hugs and kisses, daily with generous helping. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Psalms 133, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's like, it is like the precious oil of consecration poured on the head, coming down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, come down upon the edge of his priestly robes, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon coming down on the hills of Zion, For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Father in heaven, we thank you today. Thank you for allowing us, oh God, to learn from you, from your word. Lord God, I pray for families that are represented here, that Lord God, wherever conflict has abound, Father, let love abound in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, for those that came in today and they left a home that is full of nothing but conflict. I pray that when they go back home, let peace, let Jehovah Shalom be in their home. I pray, Lord God, that according to your word, oh God, that you will surround them with your love. Father, let children be like an ovary plant around the table, oh God. Let laughter be heard. Father, your word declares, oh God, that those who love sit in the heavenlies. Father, let the heavenlies, oh God, dwell in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that wherever there is broken hearts, broken spirits, I pray for healing. Healing that you only can provide in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, even as we continue with the rest of the service. Father, I pray that you will go before us, that Lord God, you bless even the everyone that's coming to minister, open our hearts to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. And we say amen.